in Miss Grandpa the Tuss. Challenger League. That made me very sad. I, everyone loves a little bit of Waiva. But for the moment, we can see that we're loaded in. So spawning in the top left position, we have got the red Protoss player. It is the Grandpa Toss himself. It's Waiva. And his opponent down in the bottom right, the blue Zerg. It's Long VS XD. Yep, that's the situation we're in. White round one game away from elimination out of the tournament and out of the WCS season one. He's gonna have to try again in season season two, which is a, a big thing. It's gonna be super difficult for in season two. Are we gonna have Premier League qualifiers again, or is it just through the up and down matches and uh, the Challenger League that you can get into Premier League? I think there will be through up and downs. There may be one qualifier, but it won't be done the same way because, of course, there was four qualifiers for Challenger last time, and that is for this time anyway. So there's also the fact that the Koreans won't have to go through the Challenger division as they have this time, assuming they do well. But for the moment, in this game, we do just see that Waiwa is scouting quite early on, wants mm -hmm. to make sure that nothing crazy is happening. He's getting down a pylon, and if he goes... Do you really think you'd go Nexus first on this map? That would be a very bold move, in my opinion. Yeah, you can, and he probably will, uh, judging from his build order right now, but it is uh, somewhat of an iffy map to do it on. It's such a big ramp, Zerglings could run by on the right side or the left side. You really have to position your buildings properly, because otherwise you might have to deal with four to six links in your natural. I don't really like this map as far as Forge expanding goes. I like to gateway expand on this one. I think it's something that's getting a lot more common, but why, why, I'm glad to see that he got that forge down first because, especially after game one, we saw that Lowell was very happy to go for a lot of Zergling aggression, especially early on, and that's something that's that you would not want to occur on this map if you were going for a quick expansion. But here we've just got the pylon block occurring at the natural base. That's frustrating for anyone who's ever had that happen to them. The third could get taken first. It depends whether Lowell wants to go for that gas off of two bases in order to get speed out quicker, or whether he goes for a more traditional, very fast third base. And those are the two different options. Wow. LOL VSXD was up to 500 minerals there for a pretty big portion of time, and that is really going to set him back. Not starting any Zerglings, not starting a Queen, not starting an Overlord, not starting a Gas, but just wanting to get his three hatches down super early on and not being able to do it. This opener is working out quite well for Wide Drive with the Pylon Block, with the Forge Expand, and like you pointed out, Lol VSXD plays a lot of heavy Zergling aggression based builds. So having a wall at your front of your natural is actually not a bad thing against that. So maybe reacting uh, a little bit is White Drop to the style that Lol played in last game. I think it's not a bad thing to do though because he's obviously needs to react very heavily to anything that's coming down because even though there's only four Zerglings out at the moment, just think of game one. How There must have been a good two, three hundred Zerglings thrown at White Ra's various bases in that game alone. So it's something which is very dangerous and can do a lot of damage. And as we saw, once it was successful, LoL won the game. Whereas White Ra, he's not really committed to anything as of yet. No critical tech choices. He doesn't have down the cyber core, only just starting it. So that's why we're waiting to see what's happening. We do, of course, have the third base up for LOL. He didn't go for the gas early. So that's a very big variation in his style compared to the first game and may signal mm -hmm. that he's got a much different strategy moving forward. Yeah, different strategy out of um, out of wide route. Not quite yet. Could still be that same Stargate build that he's gone for in game one. He's getting that zealot out. He's got uh, probably going to be putting a stalker behind that and maybe try to put some pressure on the third base again as we've seen him do in the last game where Lovia 6D kind of overreacted and made like 16 zerglings but was able to run into the main base and do some significant damage that way. If Wydra would have had his stalker or zealot on hold position the proper way there the damage would have been n near to zero and Wydra would have been in a fantastic position but Wydra, once again, he has a few holes in this wall. This is uh, this is risky against a player like Lol V6D, who he uses so uh, so heavily on the Zerglings. Yeah. Wydra, though, he's intending on just taking a very quick third base, as we can see by the pylon position, or at very least going to be faking that exceptionally quick third. He is knocking down the rocks, though. He's banking up a lot of Renoers. It's a very greedy style here, because he's literally got one gateway 
is all he's using in order to secure this third base. It's exceptionally early though, which means that if he can get away with it, we'll put him in a great position moving forward. But Lol, he's had his three bases up for a while. He's just starting Zergling mm -hmm. speed. He's going to start the heavy teching shortly. Up to two gases. We'll probably take the third and fourth fairly soon. There's the double evolution chamber. I'm not sure how comfortable I am with Wildwire taking up third so early. It could get punished, but for all the scouting information he's got, there's no reason for him to be too concerned because these Zerglings are really the first sign of aggression that have been coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this time around I think they're purely defensive. Oh, he's trying to get the surround on the Stalker. He doesn't quite manage to get it, and the Zerglings spawn at different bases, so by the time the next four Zerglings get there, the- Oh, oh the surround dude. on that Stalker! Fantastic there by LOL. That is what you need to do if you want to win these games. Level. That, that is high level. Surrounding a Stalker like that is not easy to do. You have to control three different groups of links, send them to the right location, and react on the micro that the Protoss player is doing. That was really good. Wow, I'm really impressed with this uh, this third player here. And that's of course shut down any aggression the YWOW is going to be going for. Uh oh, no God. wall. No wall. Here come the Zerglings again. And they stream straight through. This is disastrous yet again. This is a good number of speedlings making it into the base. In grand total, we do have six of them. A lot of probes are going to go down here. Already getting pulled from the main. And what is there to defend? A mothership core. Yeah, a mothership core. That's the only thing he has right now. And a stalker. And they do not have a lot of DPS combined. He's trying to defend as well as he can. Another stalker being warped in to tr to help and deal with that. The probes are going to have to fight for themselves. And they are fighting for themselves, but a few of them are dying. Might be able to get one more probe kill. No, he's not. The stalker is there to save that. Four workers killed. Not that bad. Four workers is manageable. But Wydra's build is going to be so disrupted. Lost mining time. Um, his second Stargate's not producing anything. Stuff like that. Yeah, a massive amount of lost mining time, and it's also the mental pressure of that. And the wall off, there is still a gap, and that means wave two of these Zerglings are coming in. This is trick me once, shame on me. Trick me, uh, shame on you. Trick me twice, shame on me. Is the expression. As we can see, so many probes are going to go down here. Yep, I saw the wall, and I was like, um, he knows there's a hole there, but I don't think he quite realized it. Uh, might have misplaced the Cyber 4 a little bit, I'm not too sure, but it is uh, a little bit painful to watch. More Zerglings streaming in, no wall is down, oh, Wytra, he might be losing to this mass Zergling style again because his wall was not ready. We can see that already nine workers have been killed, more are going to narrow down as more and more Zerglings stream through. There's still no block off in that wall, yet again the main base is going to get rampaged by these Lings. It's just so cheap for Lol to keep doing this in just terms of the resources he's spending. He's costing Wygras so much in lost workers, in lost mining time, being thrown off his build. Zerglings will not be able to come in again. There is only a single Zealot there, and with so many Lings they can just keep punching at it. The upgrades are 1-1 against 0-0. This is traumatic to watch. It is saddening to watch. The Zealot stays alive, actually. With 7 HP, the Zerglings have had enough, but there's more Zerglings, of course. In the main base, still doing damage. The probe kill count is getting a little bit out of control right now. 14 workers killed, but the supply is still very equal. The worker count still pretty equal. LoV60 has not been macroing behind this as much. I mean, he was getting his upgrades, but other than that, he was yep. not getting additional gases. He was not going um, for some kind of particular tech like Infestors or uh, Spire play as we've seen him do in last game. He was just attacking, 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 and microing, 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 and not uh, paying attention to his macro. So why draw? He's still in this game. He still has a good shot. Yeah, and of course it's worth noting that a lot of those workers were skipped in order to get those lings out, but now Lol just went for a massive drone wave and he's going for another 15. He's going to be going up to just over 90 drones on the field with four bases. That's a great position for him to be in. Waiwa preemptively getting down his fleet beacon and a good number of phoenix out, expecting a transition into mutalisks. Therefore, Lol will have to go for a different route. No way you can viably go for muters when you know this many phoenix are already down and that's why we're seeing the infestation pit could just be a very quick tech up it's something that a lot of zerg players have been doing recently i know people such as todd have been very active on twitter discussing it there's the anna and pulse crystals upgrade coming down for why as well desperate to make sure that if muters were to come out he wouldn't have too much success the spire is getting started and ultimately that could just be for a couple of corruptors just to help deal with those phoenix if they do mass up
Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Phoenix actually really difficult to deal with if those numbers start to get up there, and the numbers are getting up there. We have seven of them now on the field with two Void Rays. So we're going to see a bit of a, a different air toss a composition by White Razzies done in last game. Last game it was mass Void Rays, and then he got countered so hard by the Mule because he was like, oh, well, I better make a few Phoenix in this game. That's exactly what he's been doing. He's going to be going into the main base, lift the Queen, do some damage. Any damage that you can do is uh, beautiful, of course, with these uh, Phoenix because they're going to be regenerating their shields and will be uh, absolutely fine. Hive already getting started up. We see that Anna and Pulse Crystal is nearly finished. The Robotics Bay on its way. And this is the one plus side for Wayra. If he can hold this off, he does still have three bases up. His worker count is at seven, which is very comfortable for where he's at at the moment. And if he pumps out a good sizable force, he's not out of this game. Upgrades are looking quite happy though for the Zerg player. 2-2 up against only plus one air armor. Not the best spot to be in in terms of the upgrades moving forward. But tech-wise, why we're not falling too far behind yet. There's 11 Corruptors on their way out as well as the plus one air weapon. So just as I said earlier, getting those Corruptors out to deal with Mass Phoenix, very effective. Also means that if if um, if Colossi come out, you can deal with those very quickly. But the Void Rays will do good damage. Look at how many speedlings there are, though, Lurlian. Wow, that's a lot of speedlings doing some good damage here, surrounding some of the units. The cannons there are actually helping out a big deal. The horsemen are quite all right, but this is too many Zerglings, and they are way too well upgraded at 2-2. Two, two. The hatchery in the bottom left has gone down. The fifth base of Lovia 60 has been killed off by Whitra, but he lost a significant portion of his army there, especially those very expensive sentries. And that, of course, is a bit of a problem for him because that was so much gas which has gone down. Now the Corruptors are engaging a Phoenix in the middle. Great engagement there. Two Phoenix do manage to go down. And this is a scary point when you just see so many Corruptors. There's 13 more in production. LOL VSXD getting just so many Corruptors out at the moment. It's pretty sick to see. The 3-3 three, three upgrades getting started as well. And this is before White Ra has got anything else other than plus one ground weapons. Yeah, the upgrade advantage for low V6D is getting out of control here. Whitra is starting to build that incredibly difficult to deal with uh, Protoss late game death ball. And of course, these Corruptors don't have any upgrades, so they are going to die pretty quickly to the air units of Whitra because they have 1-1. One, one. So in theory, the upgrades are in favor of Lovia 6D, a big deal. Is he is he gonna do this? There's a Colossus out, that's gonna help a bunch. Those Zerglings really cannot do too much. This wall is finally proof. But there's too many corruptors. There's way too many corruptors. Yeah, even the void rays couldn't deal with them, and this was just a really nice push. The Colossi gonna go down very fast. All of the air dominance that Wayra did have is getting annihilated at the moment. Even with the well, even with the next this cannon, it's not gonna be enough. Look at these Colossi fall. This is not a good spot for Wayra at the moment. No, it's not. Wydra is probably down and out. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. He's at 85 probes, so he has a good economy. But his army supply is 29. The only thing he has out on the field are six stalkers, an immortal, and two sentries. And yes, he is producing a few void rays out of his, uh, out of his stargates. But his opponent's not stopping. Low is getting a fifth base. He's getting a, a sp another spire. He's getting a mutalisk. He's getting everything. He's getting base number six in the bottom left. It's going to be six bases Zerg versus three base Whitra. And Whitra has been trading inefficiently all game long. It's just disadvantage upon disadvantage. Yeah, he's. The trouble is losing all that army as well. It takes such a long time to come back from that. We can see that LOL, the SXD, is already near maxed out once more. He's getting a good number of muters out. He's got a good number of corruptors out. And he's got his 3 3 ground upgrades on their way. A really mm -hmm. nice position for him to be in. And I don't see why we are coming back from this, unfortunately, at this stage of the game. No. Ultimately, I think Whitra is going to be biting the dust here um, in the end. Well, uh, while, you're, while we are seeing these Mutalisks kill a few of the cannons here, it might not be trading the most efficient way that there is, but he doesn't really need to. He's on six bases. He's got 6,000 minerals in the bank, 300 gas that he just spent on some more upgrades and some more Mutas. Whitra is going to be confined to three bases. He's going to be able to max out once, and that's the army he has to win the game with. Yeah, this is... I don't see anything he can do, to be honest. The Mutas are coming out, the upgrades are so superior for for the Zerg player, and it's just going to keep getting better and better because he's got so many bases. He's still up at 97 drones, a brilliant spot to be in. And yes, there are Phoenix on their way, but with so many Corruptors there, they're just not going to be effective. 
<laughs> no, they're not. They are not going to be able to do much at all. This is actually funny to watch. I mean, such a heavy air style by Zerg. That is not something we see every day. We've got 20 meters in the air and 13 corruptors in the air. So that's uh, 33 air units for Zerg. Not very often you get to see that. The Phoenix are going to be moving out, but they're going to be flying right into the corruptors and two go down pretty much instantly. Now we do have a drop on its way into the main base at the moment, but Waira, with even just a massive Zealot drop, is still in such a tough spot. He's trying to drop everywhere with War Prisms, which is the only real option that he's got right now. But the Mutalists, so agile, so mobile on the map, can get around and deal with that effectively. So many Spines are also on their way down. Yes, the main base taking a little bit of damage, but the double the Spire upgrades are going to be completed before it's done, and ultimately the Zopet is maxed out early. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's in a very Ultimately. good position. <laughs> Ultimately, I think he's gonna be uh, it's gonna be all right. Whitebra is finding back though. He's starting to get maxed out himself. He's at 173, and he's trying to focus the hatchery at the uh, sixth base, but he's not gonna get that one down. He was trying to focus a spire in the main base, not gonna get that either. And the mutas are gonna be cleaning everything up. The zerglings, of course, super mobile with amazing upgrades. 3-3 has been researched, of course. He did not get uh, Adrenal Glands yet, which surprises me a little bit. He's upgrading his Zergling so well, not getting Adrenal Glands might be, uh, you know, might be good. Yeah. Now, the one thing that I do want to note on is that just the bank from LOL VS XD. He's got a massive bank out there, and that's purely based on the fact that he has got just shy of 100 drones out for the vast majority of this game, and a maxed out army. He physically cannot spend that, which just means that even if Wybra has an amazing trade, there's going to be another army for the Zerg of the perfect composition to deal with what Waiwa has out whenever that goes down. The Corruptors, the Mutalists are still being used incredibly effectively. We can see that the 2-1 upgrades are done for them and both of the Spires are still up so the 3-2 can get started whenever. Yeah, White Dwarf has got one chance and one chance only. That army that he has needs to destroy the first Zerg army. And then before the second Zerg army is able to get all together, if you know what I mean, you know, they're going to be spawning from different hatcheries. They need to meet up to become that scary force. If he's able to get his army in a position where he can pick off small portions of the reinforcing army, maybe he can do it. And his Phoenix are still doing a good job. His harassment has definitely paid off and he's killing some drones here. So he's definitely hurting the economy of Lol vs XD a little bit. He's not on the 6,000 minerals anymore that we saw him be at a few minutes ago. The downside is though, that all the Wairar is achieving by knocking out those drones is freeing up more supply for more units. And that is actually slightly beneficial to the Zerg player at this time. But if it does go on longer, you're quite right. The economy damage will start racking up. Wairar is mined out at his natural though. That means that he's got to keep this fourth base secured. The hatchery is going to be able to survive just. And another base into the swarms, into the swarms, well, forces. Yeah, the Phoenix trying to trade efficiently with the Corruptors, they do outrange them. But even though they outrange them, they will die really quickly if they get into range for just a second. And the Phoenix yep. only have one range over the Corruptors, whereas they have six, uh, three or four range over the Mutalisks. So Mutalisks are going to be super easy targets. The Corruptors, you really need to micro well to be able to stay out of their uh, attack range, because it's only one difference. Now my one concern, I have the LOL VS XD, is that Storm is about to complete. Wybra is nearly maxed out, and a maxed out Protoss player can be very, very scary. And if, well, if LOL takes too long to end this game, he can suddenly notice Wybra getting a comeback. He is harassing lots, but he's got to go for that killing blow at some point. The Phoenix are now coming in. There's some storms, and we can see just how quickly they tear through an air army. And the Phoenix just microing absolutely to the max, but the Corrupt is dealing a huge amount of damage. This is not looking too good for Wybra, but he's coming in with the Void Rays, and a lot of Void Rays are on the field. Six of them with Prismatic Alignment tear through Corruptors incredibly quickly. And at the same time, we've got some harassment on the other side of the map with Zealots. Wow, another 25 Mutas coming out. That's an interesting decision. Wybra, though, is producing more Void Rays. Mm, that's not exactly what he's going to need. He needs a few more Void Rays, don't get me wrong, because there is 18 Corruptors out on the field, which is a lot. But he needs to think about the Mutas too. He has Storm to weaken them, but he needs the Phoenix to finish them off. So has to be very careful with these last six Phoenix that he has alive. He now sees more Mutas reinforcing and he's going to be thinking, Oh, more Mutas, I better change my army composition a little bit. But the really good thing for LOL is that he's actually managed to get the Phoenix count down to just four. However, there are six 
High Templar down, three more on its way, and the Storms, if they keep hitting effectively and the Mutalists aren't able to regenerate all their health up between fights, that could be okay, but as we see, these Mutas just tearing apart all of the bases. The third is taking a tremendous amount of fire, and the Phoenix oh. just is too small in number. Oh, oh. A white rider just lost three of his near full energy high templars the spine crawlers at the i don't know at the base in the bottom left that law basics they just lost the mutas are still going rampant in the main base do we have any phoenix left alive only two phoenix left only one high templar so no storms are available to deal with this big clumped up air zerg army I think uh, I think he's finally done it. Lobby 60 is finally broken wide right. He might be able to straight up engage here. Has to be careful of the Archons though, and the occasional yep. storm that might be lying around. And if you clump up over Archons, of course you are going to have a very bad time. The Stargate's mm -hmm. trying to get focused down as more Phoenix come out, but of course as soon as those Phoenix pop, they're just going to melt to that air force. But yeah, long he's knocking out the production facilities, he's knocking out the probe count, the bases, trying to get himself as far ahead as possible. But at some point, he's got to take that head-on engagement and try and win this game. And Wipra, if using these Archons effectively, he can deal a lot of splash damage. Yeah, he can. That's the only hope he really has, to get like a miracle storm and a miracle, miracle Archon positioning. His Archons aren't there, that's a miracle storm for sure, but I don't think it's enough of a miracle right now. The Mutas are all still alive, even though they're on low HP, they're not gonna stick around for the Archons to be able to kill them, and he just flies out of there, needs to wait a minute or two, they will be regenerated and back to full health. GG, well played, good luck, comes out of Grand Patons as he leaves the game, and there with is out of the Challenger League.